pedestal. So I'm looking forward to doing that too. Because okay. that's going to give me a lot of opportunity okay. to do little tiny details, which I love. You know, <laughs> you know, just placing this flower open and then just, you know, fantasy, whatever's going oh, on gosh. inside. I really like your photographs, the way you do, you know, a whole kind of shot and then there's a close-up on most of them. I never mm -hmm. really thought about that yeah. before, but it's really yeah. neat. Well, yeah, I think, you know, if you're work, you know, my work has a lot of detail, so if I'm trying to, you know, show it in photographs, it's, it's you just can't, you can't really see it all. The close-ups really do help uh, give that information of what's there. But it's a good idea if you're applying for shows or anything like that to have close-ups as well. In your work, so that's always good. I think what tools I need to do this. Is that show in Portland the end of this month, or is it in November? It the Enfica? Yeah. It's going to be in March. March. It's always March. the last uh, week in March, or or second to the last week of March, yeah. somewhere around there. We're talking about trying to get a group from I here to go. Definitely go. Really? It's a it's a wonderful. It's really a good opportunity to just see a lot of work, like in one place. Days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because people, you know, from all across the country participate, and there'll be shows everywhere. So there's like more play shows in one city when you go to the Enseca than there is ever in that city otherwise. Oh, yeah. So that's that's what's really good. And there's and they're all kind of and there's workshops associated with Enseca. You know, so all the different places you can go to workshops. It's like a big caca. Yeah. It is. A big ceramic caca. Yeah, the ceramic caca is instrumental. So yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't go every year at all. But I, you know, I'll go if it's. I'll go if it's nearby. And I did go to one in Philadelphia one year. And uh, and there's there's lectures and everything in Portland. Oh, thirty miles. Portland's uh, like a three-hour <laughs> drive from Seattle. Yeah. So it's not bad at all. Okay, so I think I'm going to get started with this chart paper demo this morning. Yeah. And, um, and then you guys can try this too. So what I usually start out doing is doing some sketches of forms and things that I wanted. So come up with the shape that you want to that you want to do. And I mean, if you have a paper template, you can just sort of do it once and then, you know, um, cut out that piece of tar paper and use that since your paper template might get messed up. It matters what size of goes into clay? No. No, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter at all. So wet the tar paper, which, you know, takes a little doing because it doesn't want to get wet usually. Because that's, that's, that's what it's for. That's what it's yeah. for. <laughs> Although this one is wetting oh, much more quickly than that one does. Because it never rains here. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> it all comes down to it never rains here. Do you ever oh, soak it? No, I don't. Yeah. What was that question? I didn't know if you could soak it like in a bucket. Oh, soak it. I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you can't, but I, I don't think I would do that. You just kind of want to get it wet so it's going to stick it to the clay. So then wet side down, okay, onto the clay. And then next step is to just really roll this into the clay deeply, deeply. So you just really want to embed this into the clay so that when you, you know, when you um, feel it, the clay, you know, you're just sinking this in so the clay is like higher than because when you build with this, you don't want the tar paper to come apart, to come off. So I go over the edges a lot. I really make sure that I'm totally embedding this. And I have a feeling that this isn't going to work as well because it's not as thick. So it might be a little bit more challenging getting it up, but we'll sort of see how it goes. All right, and then the next one. I'm wondering if you could put two pieces of tar paper together so that they can... Well, they won't stick to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Duct tape. Duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> I love duct tape. <coughs> That's spray glue, two pieces together. Yeah, I suppose you could do something like that. So, I don't know, maybe, is it, 
this is this isn't just the stuff that you put on the outside of the buildings. What's that called Timex? when you build? This isn't just Timex. Or what, no. Maybe is it, it is. I no, because I don't know. Like I would. It is tar paper. Yeah. What does it say inside your shirts inside the rug? There's an E and an F. Yeah, it's not really saying much. Uh, on the other side. Do not use our clay. GM Craft 60. GM Craft 60. And it's ripping up. No, we'll see as soon as we experiment. Maybe we'll craft that. Could you roll one of your existing templates of tar paper in there so we can see the difference? Um, or is this going to stay on there? Well, we'll see. I mean, I'll do this first, and we'll see There's how that works. One right oh, thank you. This doesn't work. I got a whole lot of really cheap paper that you can have for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it would work in there. There's some really cheap paper to be out. I think it'd be a lot easier yeah. just go buy the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Number good idea, Working. I really love the negative space in mm -hmm. when you when you work with these. This one's kind of this one's particularly nice. That's good. All right, now needle tool, which is something that I don't have because I broke that. <laughs> so what I for some of these needle tools. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Should have been right there. Thanks. Oh, oh, it's oh right really? There. Is it? It's underneath the plastic bag. There with the yellow tape. That's fine. Okay, well, oh, okay. No, okay. You know that? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, you have more. You have multiple signs. All right, so you can just glide your needle tool along the edge here of the tar paper and just cut out your little brow piece. Stand up better if you're using your paper. No, oh, no, oh, this, that's, that's, I, this is that's just the negative, negative space oh, in between these. I kind of liked the way that mm -hmm. looked. Turn them upside down and bevel the edges. So just so tar paper down, face down. And in order to put them together, you know, because there's so much clay, pushing them together would be very. Uh, that just would be wouldn't be wouldn't work as well. Remove this so it's out of your way without being. There we go. That's good. All right, so I'm just going to take my little beveler, but if you don't have a beveler, you can do it with a knife. And the angle isn't really important because you're just trying to remove some clay so you can push it together. So I'm just simply going to... Yeah, they are, they're, they're inexpensive and it's a good tool. Which color is it? A bevel tool. 
bevel. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I, you know, I don't worry about being exact with this because you'll see it's all gonna run together. I think maybe with this, well, we'll see. But with this thinner tar paper, this not like this process can't work. But maybe the slabs, the clay has to stiffen up just a little bit more, or once the tar paper's on it, you know, just possibly. But we'll see how challenging it is to get it up. <clears throat> and you don't bevel the bottom at all? You don't need to do that? No, not the bottom or the top. No. No, because I can play with later after I get it up, whether or not I want to have a flat bottom, or do I maybe want to even have a curved bottom, you know, to... The clay is really wet and sticky, so this is... So you could let it sit, sit like this with the tar paper for a little bit or take a hair dryer, you know, a little bit. So it just stiffens up a tiny bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to put it up without doing that just to sort of see how that works. Not doing demos that fail. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, keeps, keeps things interesting. How come you're working with white clay? Oh, because I ran out of red clay. <laughs> Good reason. Yeah, you can do the organic. There's a little red clay left, but it wasn't. I didn't think that that was enough necessarily. Okay, this is kind of the hard part. <laughs> is that you know you've cut it out and everything, but now you've got to get this up, and um, it's a little bit it's a little bit challenging at first. Um, but we'll see. So I'm gonna score. This is wet clay, so it scores really well. And I'll just go ahead and score all of them right now. Just like them. All the edges. Let's score all the edges. And then I just, I'll just use the, I don't really need slip because it's, the clay is soft, so I'm going to go ahead and just do water. Just water. Yeah. I'm just sort of kind of back and forth over this a little bit. I mean, it's very soft already, so I'm just trying to get a little something there so it can stick together and not come apart later. If you had let them sit up a little bit longer, mm -hmm. then would you use slip to put them together? I might, if it's mm -hmm. not, if, if they're, yeah, a little bit. But you don't want the clay to stiffen too much with this because you have to bend it, so you don't want it cracking. But I might use just a little slip, yeah, that wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. I'm gonna do a lot of squeezing, so. That, so it's nice to have a, that scoring and that little bit of water so it just squeezes the shape together. This is a bit of an extreme shape. It would be easier to have it not be quite so narrow at the top. You'll see, but I like to show what's possible with this. <clears throat> okay, so now putting it together is what uh, can be a little bit uh, challenging. Just how do you get these sides to attach and everything? So the thing with the tar paper that's nice is you can just kind of let the slab sort of drape over like this and the tar paper holds it and protects it. So it isn't gonna break doing that. Whereas if you didn't have the tar paper that, you know, the, the piece might fall apart. So I start at the bottom of the top. You just kind of make a decision one way or the other. And then I'm just going to start squeezing. So my hand's on the tar paper. Now with the thicker tar paper, the squeezing like this, uh, another good thing about that is it doesn't put an impression on the clay because you just you can press really hard and you're just pressing on the tar paper. So we'll just sort of see how that goes. So now I'm just squeezing <clears throat> and lifting. And it, it's a little 
awkward eyes that's falling apart at the bottom there. So let's see, let me try to get back in. You can kind of try to put it, push, push it any way you want to sort of hold it. You know, you've got that paper essentially holding this shape together so that you can, the goal is to squeeze the tar paper till all this clay comes out. You know, you want tar paper touching tar paper. So you're oh. squeezing like this, all this ex excess clay comes out, and more or less tar paper touching tar paper. So that it gets, that's what I've found anyway, then, then it's sort of, then it sort of shifted a little bit, but yeah. So I'm squeezing really hard, and that's what, that's what's kind of, you know, this is me, but this is holding this shape together. So just really squeeze that clay, that tar paper. Hmm. So there's one. Like it can stay in the room. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and, the tar, and, the, and it really does work better with the stiffer. So now what I'm trying to do before I put that third side on, and this is the part that gets a little challenging, is I'm reaching inside this pocket and I'm trying to form this, you know, and make this curve so that I'm going to have a, right. a curving Push piece. Because if it, once I put that other side on there, if the whole thing is flat like this, it's going to be flat. Mm -hmm. So you reach in and you create your volume. And this tar paper, if it was a little stronger, would be supporting this little foot. But this is a bit of a extreme shape. I mean, it's, this is not the easiest shape in the world. But I really like it. It's sort of a. So you don't reinforce that seam inside. Um, you can, but I've never found it to be necessary. One of the things about building this way with the clay really soft and squeezing really hard yeah. is you're just really pushing that seam together. And so uh, they do not tend to come apart at all. Now you can, um, I'll, uh, once it's leather hard, because you're going to leave it with the tar paper until it's leather hard. I'll dry it with a hair dryer. Then you can flip it and reinforce as much as you can get in, but you really can't get in very far with such a, an extreme shape. So, okay, let's see what I can do with number three. Wow. This little thing is, this little, this little curve right here is sort of a bit, being a bit problematic because it's, it's kind of weak. So maybe with this tar paper being like it is, it would be better to have something that's just flat there. So, cause this part here is a little bit wonky, but we'll see. All right, so getting the third part on, same thing. You just kind of have to start at some point. Sometimes what I'll do is stick a support in there, like a brick or something or a kiln, sh uh, kiln post or something, just to sort of give me a little help so I can. Do you want a kiln post? Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'm going to just use this one, see how it goes. Or, or some clay. So once again, I can just let this flop. And I'm just going to start down at the bottom. Maybe without my bottle, because this is a bit much. So I'm just squeezing again. I'm using my chin. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> this is an all-body experience. <laughs> now we know why they gave you a chin. Yeah. All this time, but I'm just <clears throat> with the chin. <laughs> so I'm going to squeeze, and you see this is going in like this, which I don't want. But for now, it doesn't matter because I have, you know, my I have my one other side that I can. You can reach in there with some tool and push it out, right? Yeah, it has. I haven't closed off this side yet, so once I get it attached, I'll be able to change the shape of that. I really like these shapes. The thing, you know how with the with the um, drop molds, you can tell when something's been made in a drop mold because it has real, a real softness to it, like a pillow-like look to it. You can tell. I can usually tell when somebody's made something with tar paper too because it has also has that has this sort of edge to it. That That's I how like. you made it, those uh, those early large vases of Majolica. No. Did you throw those? Or you do no. the, 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 the concessions. 
Do you mean the big, the big flat pieces where they were rolled out on corrugated metal? See, now I'm pushing this out so I can get that bug. Those were just flat slabs. I mean, they undulated. Mm -hmm. They did this, but they, they were not. Mm -hmm. They were not done this way. So now, see, I'm really. So before I close this, the biggest problem I'm having is with this little thing at the bottom because there's not quite enough support. What if you set so, it upside down on the? Um, that's that might be a good triangular idea. Triangular base, it might be more spread around. No, it might be. I, I need to start the joining though at the same place every time or it won't, but I will probably flip it over. But I would say if you're gonna play today with this, I think this tar paper is working other than just when you have little things like this. So I would say just don't do anything quite like that. I'm just checking right now because it's not gonna be easy for me to get in and push this out and create the volume I want. So I wanna make sure I have it now. And if I don't, you can reach in with tools too but I can, I'm just gonna open it up a little bit more and just get in here and just push this open a bit more so I get that curve that I want everywhere. And then I'm gonna push it together. Starting at the bottom again. Start at the same place every time just because otherwise you don't get your... Now this is just this piece that's in here is gonna be I am going to have plenty of opportunity once this stiffens up to add a little more clay to it, change anything. Essentially what this has done is just given me the opportunity to put up this uh, sort of faceted form with a curve, you know, where I'm not having to worry too much about the timing um, of the slab. So I just need to make sure it's, 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 it's a little wonky. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> The eyes won't drop. No. The drop stand. Good. It's the yeah. bottom. It doesn't want to stand on that. Yeah, it, it doesn't want to stand on this because it's not quite enough support. All right. So I would. So what I'm going to do is. Will it? No. <laughs> I'm going to dry it with a hair dryer. That's what I'm going to do. Will it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and just really squeeze those, you know, really squeeze those those edges because that, and then kind of go back and forth over this with your fingers because that's just really going to hold your piece together. Yeah, those sharp edges are very attractive. I know. I, I love that about this. And then when it comes, the, when the tar paper, you'll see when I take the tar paper off, you'll still have that nice sharp edge to it, but it will be leather hard. And then there's still a lot you can do. You can change the shape of it. You can do a lot of things to it once you take the tar paper off. And you need to wait until it gets leather hard if you do that. Yeah, so normally, you know, when I'm teaching this, it would be you put up you put up your form, you know, one day, and then the next day or the next week you come in, you wrap it, and then you take it apart. But I'll, I'm going to go ahead and dry it with the hair dryer from the top to the bottom, and then we'll pull it apart in a little bit there. Just don't want to stand up that way at all. <laughs> Now it's the back that is collapsing. Wow. Okay, well then I'm gonna think I think it's gonna look good this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. That's the bottom though. Yes. Exactly. It's a great shape. Yeah. Great jobs. Yeah, I can put some handles on it here, a little foot oh, handles cool. here. Mm -hmm. So give me a little tippy. <laughs> it could be put on a base. So you don't want to put the bottom on it anyway until you have it leather hard and you take the tar paper off, because then you can still work on on the clay, you can still do things with it and change the shape in a lot of different ways. But you just get it to the point where you get it up and I think I'm just gonna work with the fact that it wants to curve and make it curve. It's an incorporated twist. Mm. <laughs> Always a critic. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna have a little curve in there and I'm just gonna sort of see what goes on. Can you just What's the most number of facets you've made yeah. a piece yeah. with? Don't touch it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> I love it. All right, now I yeah. just need to let it sit here and then I can dry it a, a bit. And so then I can push it around a little bit more and form it a little bit more. So that's the essential technique. My recommendation would be 
try try something with a flat base. Don't do this little <laughs> cut in thing, because that's you know that that's with this tar paper is not strong enough. But with the thicker tar paper, you can do that. Especially this one, you see, I have already done probably two or three times. So if you're doing an extreme shape, it's really good to even use uh, the stiff tar paper just once. Then you know that's when it's at its strongest, and then you can hold uh, shapes really well that way. And you can get tall and what, wide. What's the most fastest you've done on a beach? I think probably five, not not this wide, but you know strips, so you mm -hmm. can get a real nice. Um, I've made nice candelabra shapes that way, you know. So you can do something that kind of goes up with small facets. It's really very nice. Excuse me. So you say something about the tar paper being at its strongest of the first time. Does that mean that yeah. you can't keep using it over and over again? Well, you can, you know, you can use it maybe, it gets less strong every time because, oh. you know, it's wet, it gets wet and you've bent it. And oh. So the first so time you wear it out. Yeah, it does. It does wear out. Oh, okay. That's why you buy a roll and you have it, share oh, it with oh. somebody else and you'll have enough tar paper to last oh, okay. in your life. Because okay. they come in big rolls. Okay. Heavy, too. Heavy, <laughs> yeah. Okay. A lot of times, I don't know, here, but in Seattle, you can drive around and, and people will throw them out on their front lawn saying, please take. You know, because everybody seems to have a roll of, of tar paper somewhere in their basement if they've ever done sure, a roof or anything. So, um, so, um, so the only way to learn this is to try it. It's not, it's, uh, there are all the steps you need, kind of need to remember. So um, play around with cutting out some shapes and then trying to uh, put something up and see how you do. I think I would do, I'm gonna do another one too and just cut the bottom. I'm gonna do like a flatter bottom piece as well and just try something that isn't, this is just, it's a little too, it's not gonna work that way. I think I'll lay it down for a few minutes. Let's see how that goes. So I'm gonna dry this and I, cause I wanna sort of show you also how 